Father, we cannot live the same. Father, we cannot live the same. The way that ministry has been done has been a reproach. And Father, we ask you for your mercy and your forgiveness. We want the light of your gospel to shine. We want the light of your gospel to shine. Use us, Father. Use us, Father. Father, we must have revival. We must have revival, oh God. We must have revival. Your Holy Ghost and fire fall upon us. Fall upon us, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I break every mind-blinding spirit. I break every spirit of lukewarmness, every spirit of complacency. Father, let a desperate need arise in our hearts. Holy Spirit, I ask you for the, the, the hunger that you have placed, the hunger that you have placed and that you desire to be in every life. Father, right now, I ask you for the spirit of prayer and supplication to come upon every person in here. Right now, in Jesus' name, Father, we will activate, we activate now. We activate now when we cry out to you. We cry out to you, Father, for the moving of your spirit. The moving of your spirit in our lives. Father, send your fire now. Send your fire now. Send your fire now, oh God. Father, right now we need you. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you that you bring forth rivers out of our belly. Rivers in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you that you have destined us to be on the earth in this time and in this hour to show forth your glory. Father, I thank you that every person will come to realize, will grab a hold of the destiny that you have on, on their lives for the purpose that you have on their lives. There is only one reason for existence. There is only one reason for existence, and that is to bring you praise, that is to bring you glory, and that is to bring you honor. Father, we know the only way that we can do that is by the Spirit, is by the Spirit. We love you and we praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, right now I bring before you every family in the abiding place. Father, I cry out to you now that there be revival in every household. In every household, Father, I thank you that there would be a new revelation. That there must be change. That the way that life has been lived, that the way that things have been organized, the priorities that are in the life have got to change. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you that the fire of the Holy Ghost is the, is the thing that brings change, is the, is the changing power. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Father, we bring to you everyone that has fallen away from the families that are in this place. Father, we bring, you to, we bring them to you now and we ask you for them. We ask you for them. We call them into the kingdom. We call them into the kingdom right now. Father, I ask you for a revelation upon every parent, upon every child, to realize the eternity that they are preparing for now. Father, I, I just thank you right now for your Holy Ghost and fire. For your Holy Ghost and fire. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the families. We thank you for the families. Right now, Father, we cry out for change. We cry out for change. Father, I ask you to show every person in here the battle that rages for their soul. I ask you, Father, for a revelation that this is not a joke. This is not something that can be taken lightly. This is the reason for existence. This is the preparation for eternity. Father, may we take up sword and shield by the power of your Holy Spirit and realize that it is now time to fight the good fight of faith. Not by strength of our own ability, not by our own intellect, but by your Spirit, by your Spirit. Father, I ask you that every person in here will learn how to live by your Spirit, to move by your Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your fire. I thank you for your fire. I thank you for your fire. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that your church will rise. I thank you that your church will rise and shine as a city set upon a hill, a light that cannot be hid. Father, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Father, I thank you that the glory of heaven will be revealed. That the glory of heaven will be revealed in our lives. Everywhere we go, manifesting the gospel. Everywhere we go, manifesting the light of Jesus Christ. 
In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that you give every person in here a voice to participate with their calling. A voice to participate with what you have ordained to be the, 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 the church to be. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask you, Father, for a revelation that every person would see that they must be a member fitly joined together if they are going to participate with the body of Christ. If the body of Christ is going to be that glorious body that you have purposed and ordained. Father, I thank you that you show every person that they are responsible. That they must now begin to engage, to be activated. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that we will see the body move. Not, not just one person that has touched heaven, but an entire congregation of people that have touched heaven to be mobilized as an army that has never been seen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that there is no other cure, that there is no other answer. In this time and in this day, we must see the glory of heaven revealed. We must see the glory of heaven revealed. Father, forgive us for living in such complacency. Forgive us for having other priorities, for letting our, our, our job be our God, for letting the, the ideas of society be our God. Father, we say no more. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes and cleanses every person in here that is able to come boldly into the throne room and bring an offering to bring an offering out of desperation, a desperate offering, a cry that says, Father, we must have you. Father, we must have you. Father, we must have you. Father, we know that you honor the sincere, that you honor the truth. I ask you, Father, that every person would understand that that does not look like a frown and a complacent, dead face. Father has ordained, hey listen, listen, Father has ordained that you be passionate. There should be nothing that touches your emotions, there should be nothing that excites you, nothing that stirs that desperate cry within you, like the need, the desperate need for your Savior. We've sung this song many times, Lord, I need you. Do you? Do you really? Do you need him? When do you need him? Come on, man, all the time. Every single moment of every single day, if your heart is not pounding, need you, need you, need you, need you, need you. Then I challenge your relationship. There's no condemnation. But I challenge, what is your need? What is your need? Guys, a desperate need for the move of the Spirit is the only thing that brings the revival, that brings the change. It's not a convenient, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we, we do kind of need you, Lord. You have no revelation. You have no ability to see the time that you live in because we are in a state where there is desperate evil. There is a desperate evil. The only way we are going to see a move of God is if we will join as one voice and one body crying out, saying, Lord, we must have revival. We must have the move of the Spirit. Father, we must have the move of your Holy Ghost and fire. Father, we need you. We need you in this day. We need you in this time. Father, we ask you for the light of your gospel to shine. We ask you for the light of your glory to be revealed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that everything will be forsaken. Every other desire will be forsook, forsaken, Father. That we will only seek after you. That we will only seek after you with a desperate heart, with a desperate cry. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Father, I thank you that you place a prayer in every person's mouth. Father, I ask you by the Holy Spirit to activate each person in this place. Activate now in Jesus' name. Bring, Father, your prayer. Bring, Father, your cry. What is the desire of your heart? What is the desire of your heart? Bring a prayer and bring an offering to Him and cry out to Him for your life, for your family, for your church. In Jesus' name, right now, I break every hindrance. I break everything that would stop up the mouth. In Jesus' name, let the river of God flow out of you. 
right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Cry out to God for, for your life, for your family, and for your church. Bring a prayer now. Bring a prayer now to Him for your life, for your family, and for your church. In the name of Jesus. Let your church arise, oh God. Let your church arise, oh God. Father, let your church arise, oh God. Let your church arise, oh God. Let your church arise, oh God. Let it arise. Let it arise, Lord. Let your church wake up. Let your church now arise. Let your church wake up. Let your church arise, let it arise, let it arise. Father, 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 I thank you that this urgency that's going on in the spirit, your church would feel it. Your church would feel this urgency, Lord. They would feel this urgency. The complacency would leave. The urgency would arise. Hallelujah. Your church would wake up. That your church would wake up. They would wake up. They would wake up. They would wake up. They'd be tired of doing the same things day in and day out. Day in and day out. They'd plug into the Holy Ghost. And the first thing that they're going to feel when they plug into the Holy Ghost is this urgency. Is this thing that's happening on the earth. Those who wake up, all they feel is this urgency. They feel an urgency. What's going on? What's going on on the earth? Father, I pray that they would wake up. They would arise. I pray that they wake up now, that they would arise. They would arise. They would arise. Father, that a vision would be birthed inside. That your vision, that your vision for their lives would be birthed inside. Not their pastor's vision, not anybody else's vision, Father. It would become real to them. That it's no longer theory, that it's real, that it's Holy Ghost, that it's inside, that it's passionate, that it's all them, that you're their Jesus, that you're not somebody else's. It's a vision, a vision, a vision stirs, a vision stirs, that they don't have to be reminded then when they're in the market place and when they're at work it's just there the urgency is there they walk into the convenience store and all they can think about is does the person know Jesus do they know Jesus do they know him like I know him not a pressure not a have to an urgency a stirring in their hearts and their core the fiber of their being says they must know they must know they must know they have to have this glory they have to have this relationship they have to have what I have with God I pray that every church member would have it that they would have it that they would have it in Jesus name a vision a vision what God sees that your church would see what God sees your church would see Lord they would see it they would see it they would come in, to an end of themselves an end of themselves they would no longer do their duty on Sunday morning but it's a passion it's a burning it's a confident it's an expectation that the Holy Ghost is gonna move I'm coming to meet with God I'm coming to hook up with the church service already going on in heaven that God is in my midst that God is moving in me that God he's moving he's moving church arise Church arise. Church arise. Church arise. Church arise. See what God sees. Get a heavenly vision. Get a heavenly vision that's more than your nine to five job. Get a heavenly vision that takes you 24 hours a day. Those who've caught this vision, those who've been filled up with the fire and the passion of God, it's what they think about 24 hours a day. No one needs to tell them. No one needs to continually stir them up. The Holy Ghost continually stirs them up. They're full of God all the time. When that happens, there's only one thing that's going to result in your life, and that's the ministry of the Holy Ghost. It's the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Church, wake up. Church, arise. The urge, it's an urgency. What time do we think we have? What time do we think we have? All things are at hand. The time is now. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up.
up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, church, wake up, church. This is not a game. This is not a theory. This is reality. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. This is just as real when you go to lunch after church. It's just as real when you wake up and you have your coffee. It's just as real when you punch in the time clock at 9 a.m. It's just as real. The urgency hasn't gone anywhere. All things are at hand. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. It's true. It's now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Let the Holy Ghost wake you up on the inside. Let Him wake you up. Let Him wake you up. Let it go beyond being tempted to quit your job from time to time because you get emotionally stirred up. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, church. We're going to wake up. We're going to wake up. We're going to run with the fire of God. We're going to run. Church, church arise. Church arise. Church arise. Church arise. Church, arise. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that a vision for their lives, Lord, would be so stirred on the inside of them. There's a vision right there, and they see what their life is supposed to look like on the earth in you. And they look at that, and they don't look anywhere else, and they don't stop moving until it looks exactly that way. In the name of Jesus, church, arise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Listen, we're going to spend some time pressing into this. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. The church has to arise. You, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice this morning, whether you want to leave without a vision or whether you want to catch this vision, whether you want the Holy Spirit to impart this into you now. That cannot happen by me praying for you. That cannot happen by Kelly praying. Pastor, anybody else, you have got to realize that the Holy Spirit is going to use you you have to catch this vision. This is a time right here. This is an atmosphere where God is imparting vision into your life, where God is imparting to you those things that he is destined. What do you, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? Retired after working yourself to death? Or do you see yourself in the purpose of God, running every day, carrying the fire of the Holy Ghost? Where is your vision? The scripture says, my people perish for lack of vision. God wants to impart to you vision now. You have got to engage. You have got to open up your mouth. It can be a simple prayer of God, give me vision. God, give me hunger. But right now, I just feel, look, we, got, we have the saints here this morning. We have this, the, the abiding place, this core group that has desperately sought after God for a lot of years. For a lot of years. It is time now to see the glory of heaven revealed in San Diego, California. It is time now. We will stand. We will stand strong in the word that God has delivered. You might look around and see a discouraging hotel room. I see us in the middle of the working hand of God. In the purpose and the plan of God. We are positioned right now so strategically you have no idea. If you had any idea, you would be screaming to the top of your lungs. Okay? Listen to me right now. God is about to mobilize the abiding place and raise up this light. Not for us. It's going to be a faceless, a nameless church. All that anyone is going to recognize is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The, the power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus will be seen in the earth. I'm asking you now, I'm begging you now, please come and participate. Please come and participate because we need you. We need you. The harvest is white and the laborers are few. We need you. We need you. Right now, engage in, in grasping a hold of the vision that God wants to give you. Pray with me now. Pray with me now and let God place in your heart a vision, a vision and a purpose for your existence. Father, I thank you that my destiny is in you. Father, that everything about my existence is found in you. I ask you, Holy Spirit, move now. Move now. Move now. Move now on your church. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for bringing change, oh God. Father, we thank you that you're fighting for our lives, oh God. That you're fighting for our families, oh God. Father, that your love, your love is so all around us. Your love is so towards us. Father, that everything you fight on our behalf, Lord Jesus. Father, let us seek you. Let us seek you. Let us trust you like we've never trusted you before, oh God. Father, your promises are sure. Your promises are sure, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Father, I thank you for a church that knows how to pray. Father, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray after the mind of the Spirit. Teach us how to pray according to your word. Father, we know that it is prayer that changes. It is prayer that changes, saying, Father, we're crying out for change. We must have change. We must have change. Father, I ask you for supernatural strength to come upon every person in here to be able to run the race that you have purposed them to run. Father, to fulfill the destiny that you have placed upon their life. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that they will mark down today as a day that they have notable change. Notable change. Father, this is not just another Sunday morning, but an encounter with you. An encounter with you that has never been known, that has never been seen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have destined greatness upon every life, that you have destined purpose upon every life. In the name of Jesus, I come out against everything that would hinder that purpose, that would fight against that vision. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you so much for your precious sacrifice that you gave, that you gave Jesus. Father, we thank you that all power, all authority is in that precious name, the name of Jesus. I ask you, Father, for there to be a sacred, sacred honor and a sacred reverence that returns to that precious name. Father, I ask you to forgive us, to forgive your church for letting that name be defiled, for letting that name become a byword, for not honoring the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that the power that is in the name of Jesus will be seen. That every time that that name comes upon our lips, there would be manifest glory. That there would be the manifest power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That precious name. That precious name. Press in with me. We're going to keep going here. Because listen, 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 listen. You're at, you're like right at that, you're right at that line, some of you. Some of you pressed in, you've caught it. And others, you're right at this place. I don't know if you will have another opportunity to catch this vision. I don't. But I know what's going on right now. 
If you catch it now and you move with what God is moving, you do what God is doing. Listen, listen. Noah had one opportunity to get in the ark and to shut the door. If he would have missed it, things would be a lot different. The mercy of God is there. The forgiveness, the blood of God is there. I'm not saying you're not going to make heaven. But I'm telling you, there is a purpose for your life. There is a reason for your existence. And that is to glorify the name of Jesus. Catch it, man. Catch it. Or you're going to be 30 years down the road saying, what did I do with my life? I refuse. And I refuse to be quiet. I'm going to shout and scream and do everything I can by the Holy Ghost to say, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You've run hard. That's awesome. We got a long way to go. And you better have vision or you're going to get burnt out. And you better have the fire of the Holy Ghost as your motivation every single day or you're going to lose sight. Keep the Word of God before you as a lamp unto your feet and a light into your path and let the Holy Ghost bring revelation upon revelation. It is time for the church to wake up. It is time. It is time for someone to raise a standard. There are voices every single day preaching the things that are not in the Word the things that are of deception, that are leading people down a path of unrighteousness and, call, and calling it good. We have to realize the message that has been placed in our hands and in our hearts by the Word of God, the revelation of the Holy Ghost. And it's time to proclaim it. It's time to proclaim it. If you were brought into a court of law and the charge against you was that you were a Christian, would there be substantial evidence to convict you, to say, yes, that person is a Christian? Or would they say, you know what? There's not really any evidence that this claim that this person is a Christian dismissed. I challenge you. I challenge you. What is the evidence that can be brought out to say, yes, I know a living God? It has nothing to do with works. It's a relationship. Because out of the flow that you have to the Father and Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, you cannot help but shine forth the light. To shine forth the light. The light has got to be seen. The light must be seen. The light conquers. The light conquers. It, there's not even a fight. No one ever says, can we turn up the darkness in here a little bit? No. You either turn down the light or you turn on the light. We are the light of the world. If there's darkness, it's not because someone turned up the darkness. It's because someone has let their light dwindle. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to fire up every light that is in here in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you for the light of your Holy Spirit to shine. We ask you for the light of your Holy Spirit to shine in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, turn up the light. Turn up the present in Jesus' name, in every life, in every life. Father, we cry out to you. Father, we cry out to you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, press in now, press in now, press in now. Father, let your glory be seen. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for the Holy Ghost and fire to be poured out. The Holy Ghost and fire to be poured out today. Today, Father, we bring before you the three million souls in San Diego that do not have a revelation of who you are. They might know about or they might have heard a little bit, but they, they do not know you. They do not know you. Father, we ask you that a revelation of your gospel would be seen, that a revelation of your glory would be seen in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you will grant unto your servants boldness in Jesus' name to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel. In Jesus' name, we ask you that you grant unto us miracles and signs and wonders by your holy child Jesus in Jesus name Father we thank you we thank you for this we thank you for this now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Father we love you we bless you and we praise you Holy Spirit we love you we bless you we praise you in the name of Jesus
You know, right now, right now, intimidation is being broken off of people as you're getting baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, press in and say, no more, no more am I holding back. No more, no more am I going to allow the enemy to make me just sit by and let the world go by and just have the things that I think I need. But I'm going to press in and I'm going to touch the realms of glory. I'm going to touch heaven and I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is ordained of God here this morning to break off the chains that are holding people back. Oh, Father, and I pray that not one person will leave this place the same, oh God, but you will allow the glory of God will fill them. Father, they will allow you to come and touch them deep on the inside. Oh, Father, we thank you for the intimidation being broken off of people right now, that they will no longer be afraid to declare the name of Jesus everywhere they go, but they will declare your mighty glory and your mighty power. Oh, Father, that it will be seen on them and they cannot hold back any longer, but thy glory will just flow out of them like a mighty river, like a mighty river. We thank you, Father. Now, come on, people, come on. There's a few of you that are holding back, and we just right now, we bind the powers of darkness and hold people back. We bind it together. We stand, and we bind every lie that would cause people to sit down in their complacency and not press into the realms of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, let your rivers flow. Yes, Father, yes, Father in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that every person will grab a hold of that. To no longer be intimidated. To no longer sit by and be silent. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of the gift that we have been given. This message of liberation. This message of healing. This message of deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Father, we must have you. Father, we must have you. Father, we must have you. Lord Jesus, we must have you. We must have you. We must have you. Father, we know that a revelation of who you are breaks off every bit of deception, breaks off every bit of intimidation. Father, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Father, we want to be able to freely speak, to freely proclaim everything that you have done, everything that you are. Father, we will not listen to the lie that would say no one wants to hear. We would not listen to the lie that would, that would hold us in silence. We know the answer is in our mouth because you have placed it there. We know that you are the only answer for the world. You are the only answer for healing. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that every person will begin to boldly proclaim that name, will begin to boldly stand for who they are in you, that every person will find their identity in you, Christ Jesus. Father, that they truly will live in you. No longer them but Christ who lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for the identity that you have placed. Everything of us dead, everything of you alive. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Listen, God wants to pour out a fire. He wants to continue. Let's press in. We have to cry out. We have to contend for this faith that was once delivered under the stains. And the Holy Ghost wants to pour out a fresh fire. But there has to be unity. There has to be unity. Every member must be fitly joined together. Recognize the role you play in the body of Christ and engage. We're going to spend some more time here just crying out. We just want the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall. That is the thing that changes. That is the thing that changes. Father, I ask you now for a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire, oh God. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Yes. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall, oh God. Let your fire fall. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost be in this place in the name of Jesus. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Come and move. Come and move. Come and move. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are desperate for you. Father, we must have you. 
We must have you send your Holy Ghost in fire. Send a fresh wave of revival across this land. Father, start here. Start here. Send a fresh wave of revival. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, that your fire falls now upon every life. Upon every life. In Jesus' name. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire. Your fire in Jesus' name. Father, a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that every hindrance be broken. Change come. Change come. Father, we will not live our lives the same way. In Jesus' name, there will be change. Change. Father, I ask you right now for a revelation of where we've been missing it. Father, the areas that we have not put you first, where we have not sought you. Father, when you have been something that when it's convenient to do, we then pray. That can no longer be anymore. No longer will we have a pocket religion that we pull out when it's convenient to pull out. This must be the reason for your existence. This must be everything that consumes your body. Every fiber of your being must cry out every day to know him, to know him, to know him. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Understand the key that the Holy Spirit gives you today. It's, it, it is your voice. Everything the enemy would try to do would be to keep your mouth shut. If you can't, if you can't open your mouth in church and pour your heart out to God here, you're, you're, you're certainly not doing it in your secret place. And if you're not doing it here, if you're not doing it in the congregation of the saints, you're certainly not going to do it to a lost and dying world. He wants to keep you silent. He wants to keep you quiet. He wants to keep you isolated. He wants to keep you in your mind. He doesn't want you to open your mouth. He certainly doesn't want you to proclaim. He certainly doesn't want you to yell. This is a key. This is a key to breakthrough. And everything that God does on the earth, your mouth, what comes out of your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is attached to your mouth, your mouth, what you allow to come out of your mouth, will you be silenced? That's the enemy's thing. He's silenced you for years. You've been quiet. You're quiet in the workplace. You're quiet in the church. You're quiet when you're at home. When the enemy attacks you in your mind, you just sit there and let it roll right over. Instead of opening your mouth, we've heard our pastor say before, the only thing louder than those things in your mind is your voice. Is your voice the thing in your mouth? God has given us a key in our voice, his word, his word to proclaim. His word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. What happens when you proclaim his word? What happens when you pray by the spirit? It's your mouth. He tries to keep you silent so desperately. Don't allow him to do it anymore. His whole tactic on the earth is Be quiet, church. Be quiet. Be quiet. Oh, but we can't be quiet. We won't be allowed to be quiet, to be silent. We'll shout. We'll shout. Our breakthrough is in our shout. Our breakthrough. Father. Father. that is in the shout, for the victory, for the breakthrough, for the breakthrough that is in the praise, for the breakthrough that is in the sound of thanksgiving. Oh, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We thank you, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the breakthrough. Hallelujah, 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Father. You will never be the same. You can never be the same. You can, what has been imparted here, this vision, you, listen, don't let it, don't let it dwindle. Keep, keep this and run. Keep this and run and let it build because, because here, listen, here's what God does. He gives you a word. He give you a little bit. What did he do? What did he do for Abraham? Pack up. It's what Abraham got. Pack it up. Where are we going? Pack up. And what did he do? He packed up. And God showed him where he was supposed to go. He had the vision of pack up. He packed it up. And he let God direct him. He knew God was going to lead him and, sh and take him where he wanted to. He had the faith to realize we serve a good Papa. We serve a good God who cares for us. He has purpose for us. He redeemed us. He believes in us. To think about this concept, sharing this with Amy, that God believes in me. I believe in God, absolutely, of course. But that God would believe in me, that God would believe in me enough to send his son to be a sacrifice for me so that then I could represent Jesus, so that I could stand in the place of Jesus on the earth. God believed in me enough to do that. I'll tell you what, when you have that confidence, when you know what God did for you, every person in here, God believed in you enough to say, I will give the most precious thing to me, his only begotten son, to be tortured, to be crucified, to be a reproach, to be ashamed. In the, in the culture, in the Jewish culture, among the, you know, the <clears throat> Hebrew people, if something was put up, raised on a stick, it was a reproach, it was cursed. Right? We see that at, where, in Numbers 21. <clears throat> right? The children of Israel were complaining. Oh, bread again. Why would you bring us out here to die? Right? So what happened? The, the serpents came out. Remember that story? They started getting bit. So what did, God, what did God tell Moses? Make a bronze serpent, put it on a stick. They raised it up, and they saw that that thing was cursed. And out of that realization, that is now cursed. Anyone that looked upon it, they were healed, right? Jesus was raised up as a, as a curse to sin. He destroyed sin in the flesh so that now we may be victorious over sin. He lived a sinless life, a sinless life, conquered sin in the flesh, and crucified it and cursed it upon that tree and said, anyone that will look upon this cross, anyone that will see this offering, sin will be cursed. The healing, the redemption, the restoration between God and man raised there on that tree. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. The sacrifice that he gave. I see the cross before me always, continually, that, that glorious, glorious offering that he gave, that I may now live in this baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire that he poured out, going everywhere, healing the sick, raising the dead, proclaiming liberty, this message of, of the gospel, this message of salvation. I want, do, do you, you guys don't realize what you have. You don't realize that when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Because if you realized it, you would do it. And I'm preaching to myself here because there's times where I say, ah, that person's a quadriplegic. And they're not mentally there either. And I'm like, and I'll tell you what, I'm guilty. I haven't prayed for them. I haven't done it. Because I look to myself. We look to ourselves. It's an immaturity because it's a lack of revelation. Because I no longer live. It's Christ that lives. We're not responsible for the results. Some water, some so. It's God that brings the increase. It's God that does the work. Go forth as the light of the world. That's all we have to do to shine with the gospel of Christ Jesus. To go everywhere, to go everywhere, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. 
That's the commission. That's your ordination. When the reality of who God is, the reality of His love strikes you, you be compelled. And I know that there has been a, a fresh touch from heaven to you and for you today. It shouldn't be one in a thousand, one in a hundred thousand that goes and says, wow, look at that person. They pray for the sick and they get healed. It shouldn't be an exception. It should be the rule. That person's a Christian. I can go to them and get prayer. I can go to them and I know that I'll be healed. I'll be delivered. I'll be set free. Everyone knew that if they went to Jesus, they would be healed. They would be delivered. They would be set free. I see Jesus across this place. I see Jesus in every one of you. Take on the identity that you now have. You no longer live. It is Christ that lives in. Praise God for His mercy, for His enduring patience that lets us grow and mature to come to be the measure, the fullness of the maturity of Christ, even unto a perfect man. There's that time where we're allowed to grow. We're allowed to grow. But let's not be so stuck in babyhood that there's no relationship. I'm sure I had a great time as a baby looking and staring at my dad. I'm sure it was wonderful for both of us. But I really enjoy being able to sit down and talk with my father. And for him to give me vision and purpose and say, I need you to go do this on my behalf. I need you to go do this. That is relationship. I'm sure, he was, I'm sure he was happy to change my stinky diapers and clean up after the messes I made and have patience and love for me. But there comes a time where we need to see Papa God for who he is and have that desire to commune with him, to commune with him. Goo goo gaga only goes so, so far. There comes a time where we need to say, let's have a conversation, Father. I speak to you. I pour out my heart to you, and you pour out your heart to me. You give me an assignment. Every morning you wake up and you hear your marching orders. You hear, you're going to see this person, this person, and this person. You're going to go here, here, and here, and I'm going to do this, this, and this. It's awesome when you can have the specifics, but if you won't move with what he's already given you, these specifics... Why are you going to move or how are you going to move when he speaks to you? The assignment's been given. The assignment's written out. The roadmap is here. The instruction, whatever you want to call it. The word of God, the living word. It applies to everything. More importantly, we must apply ourselves to it. Let your life be lived by the word. By the word. I loved what... Pastor Don Clower said, you can have revelation or you can have environmental dictates. Not those exact words. It's basically what he was saying. You can let your environment determine how you feel, what you do, where you go. Or you can let your revelation of who God is to you surpass everything. It will silence every voice. It will silence every voice that's a lie, every voice that is against you. Circumstances, what are those? It's not being weird in the sense that, well, none of this is taking place. Sure, it might be taking place, but that's not how it is. I live by the word. I live by the word. Father, I thank you for a revelation and a hunger. <clears throat> Guys, we got to be in the word like never before. We have to be in prayer, pressing in. Listen. I want you to think about this. If you're not lifting up your voice, I would say that there's a decent revelation of who God is, is in this place. I would say that you've had a, a pretty good encounter, an introduction into, into who Jesus is and who he's supposed to be. I would say that you, would ha you have a greater encounter than most places around the world, okay? If you're not praying with the revelation that you've had, if you haven't let the encounter that you've had with the Holy Spirit inspire you to be seeking after God with all of your heart, who is? Who is? God's looking for somebody. His eyes go to and fro, looking for anyone 
anyone. I've been so stirred up. There's just been different people that I've been looking at, God moving in their lives. And their, their history is past. They're, they're, it's just garbage, full of garbage. God redeems, he saves, right? So I look around at so many of the young people in this place. They've lived, they've lived pure lives. They've lived godly lives. It's a blessing. Why don't you let God use you? You don't have any of the baggage and the other stuff to work through. Why don't you let God use you? Let him use you. Let him use you. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's a God of the present and he's a God of the future. I just said that to make a point that we have a, a responsibility and we have this gift that has been given to us to know God, to press into the things of God. We better be doing it because if we're not, I really am curious as to who is. You need to take the responsibility on your shoulders and work like everything depends on you, but trust like it all depends on God. It's time for the army of God to arise, for the laborers. That is an intense word, to labor. You can use any example you want. But think about the word labor. It's not a stroll. He didn't ask for strollers, for recreational walkers, for people out to have an evening stroll. He asked for laborers. Oh, I'm happy I signed up because there's no greater joy. <laughs> there's no greater joy. Think about it. Think about, think about what Paul went through, right? He went through the most miserable time right but what did he say he counted it all joy there's nothing else that you can lay out in life that you would be able to say it's worth it to go through that to have that G jesus is the only thing it's worth it to go through the reproach we're going to be hated that's fine we're going to be ridiculed that's fine hey i'll tell you what we are seriously blessed to be able to come into a public hotel room and cry out to god that's freedom and liberty Okay, praise God. Praise God for this nation that allows us to have liberty to speak it out. I don't know how much longer it'll be that way. The, the mandates that they're putting on things that we're not allowed to preach. If you look around, just a few months ago, that guy at the DMV, he just was reading his Bible out loud and they arrested him and took him off. I don't know how long that freedom will be. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to press in to see it sustained. And as, as I have the opportunity to live now, I'll lift up my voice. Why don't you push it a little bit? Why don't you be a little risky? Why don't you have a little fun? Because that's where the fun is. Listen, there's people, listen, if you, if you, knew, if you knew the people that are in, are in China, where the front row, every person on the front row is swollen, is bruised, and is battered from their last beating for preaching the gospel. I think it'd do something to you. I think it'd stir you up to say, I've got liberty to be able to preach. I've got, really, what is the hindrance? What is holding you back from going around telling people about the gospel? Yeah, you, well, what, they might think I'm weird. That's broken. That intimidation, that was it. No intimidation. Why would you be intimidated to bring the solution? You see people standing. Uh, have you ever watched someone trying to figure something out and you know what the answer is? Do you just stand there and be like, oh, man, that's, that's too bad. <laughs> no, you say, hey, I, I know how to fix that. I know what to do. We do it in the, in the natural realm all the time. Why wouldn't we do it with something so crucial, something so pivotal as their eternal existence? We have the answer. We have the answer. I want every person in, to, in here to realize, Holy Spirit, I ask you for a revelation. In every heart, you are the answer. You are Jesus Christ's representatives on the earth today. Father, I thank you for vision, for purpose, for fire in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, mighty God. We love you, Lord Jesus. God is so good. He's so good. He's so merciful. From everlasting to everlasting. We love you, Father. We worship you. Glory, glory, glory. It should be a normal thing for you to go out, whether to school, to work, to the grocery store, and encounter people 
to pray for. It should be an everyday thing. You shouldn't go a day without telling somebody this good news. Because I want you to live every day as if you needed evidence. It's not works. It's a challenge. If I, if I had to give an account for this day, at the end of the day, would there be evidence that says, I know Jesus? Could I be convicted of being a Christian by the, by the life that I lived on this Sunday? Let the revelation of God move it past something that you have to do to something you get to do. It's not works if you love doing it. It's not works if it's just going about being who you are. It's all about being. When I do something, like praying for the sick, preaching the message, it's not because I have to. It's because it's who I am. I no longer live. It is Christ that lives in me. Just be. Just be who God has purposed you to be. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> I don't know what time it is. Those were announcements. Um, Father, we thank you. Oh, it's so good just to flow in the Holy Ghost. There's no, yeah, there's no other reason. Just flow in the Holy Ghost. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. Pastor Mark and Ann, Elizabeth, they all send their greetings. They love you guys. They miss you. They are seeing a mighty move of God in Japan. It's awesome. <laughs> It's amazing what God will do. He opens up the doors to a nation. It's radical. It's absolutely radical. They are seeing miracles, signs, wonders, salvation. The message of Jesus Christ is being preached. I want you guys to stay hooked up in prayer with us. They're still out for another almost a week. They'll be here next Sunday. Okay, that's right. They'll be here, so less than, less than a week. They'll be back with us next Sunday. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting. Come fired up. Bring somebody. Listen, we want to be, be an encouragement to our pastors. I can't tell you how much our pastors love you. I get to live it. I, live with the, I lived with the pastor for a long time. Okay. He loves every one of you dearly. I love you guys dearly. He cries out for you day and night. He seeks God for you every day. You know why? Because God's given him a vision. He sees you in the future. God sees us right now in the present and in the future. And out of that, he comes to the Father and he intercedes on our behalf. Isn't that radical? That's, that blows my mind that God would intercede for me. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Hook up with what God's doing. Hook up with what God's praying. We are in the middle of a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I don't care what circumstance says. I don't care what the things look like. God is moving like he has never moved before. Out of desperation, revival comes. Be desperate now. Be desperate now for the right things. People get desperate when they don't have food and clothes and money or house, whatever. Just get desperate to know God. So you don't have to be desperate for these other things. You don't have to be desperate for material things. Just get desperate to know God, to know Him on a level like you never have, to know the supernatural, the supernatural. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It's exciting. It's fun. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I would like to do two things. I'd like everybody to stand up. I want to pray for anyone in here that wants prayer. I know that the fire of the Holy Ghost has moved and he's touched you like no man can touch you, right? Well, the reason we pray for people <clears throat> is to, to encourage you to stir up your faith, to be that, to be that example that, that Paul lays out to be the church, right? To lay hands on, on the sick, okay? But you guys, every single one of you, the Holy Spirit has touched you. 
He's touched you. And I want to give you a divine commission today. Activate. Just activate. You don't have to do anything else but know Jesus as your Savior. Be washed in the blood. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're off. Look, I've, I've been looking at people. They've been 24 hours old in the Lord. And they're going and they're seeing miraculous. They're seeing the miraculous. I get a little bit envious. And you know what the Holy Spirit speaks to me? Just move. Stop looking to yourself and just move. Just move. Find someone to pray for. What is the worst that happens? You have to find another person to pray for. <laughs> Listen, the, the world needs Jesus. There's three million people in San Diego who don't know God. There might be some of that portion that goes to church and they have religious whatever. I'm talking about knowing God. Knowing God where they speak to Him and He speaks to them. The Holy Spirit leads and guides every step. I, never will, I will never limit the mercy of God, but I know what He requires. He requires you to have fruit unto righteousness. There had better be a lifestyle that reflects His Word, that reflects what Jesus bought and paid for. He did not die for us to continue on in sin. He died so that we can be victorious. It's the most important fruit. It's the most important fruit because without holiness, no man will see God. I want to see Him. I challenge you, activate. Raise up your voice and preach. There are many messages that are whacked out. They're saying it's okay to have the sin. God will accept you. This hyper grace message is weird, man. It, it's weird. You don't, I don't think you, you realize. I mean, I saw some stuff. This, I don't want to talk about it. It's crazy. It's for a preacher to be in the pulpit swearing, to be condoning a lifestyle of complete ungodliness, to condone a lifestyle of homosexuality, adultery, and everything that's listed in Galatians 5.19 to say you're good because we're all good. No, we're not all good. And we need to be the representative as it says, you know what, you're not all good, and you want to see the proof? Oh, you, your leg's shorter? Pray for him, watch a leg grow out and say, you know why? You know why that happened? Because Jesus loves you, and he wants to redeem you, and he wants to save you. And this is the message that we preach. Raise up your voice and preach a message of holiness. You'll be hated, you'll be chastised, and you'll be dismissed by a lot of people. But it's the message that Jesus preached. And I'm not preaching anything else. God will confirm His Word with signs following. But He's going to confirm His Word. Amen? Amen. Activate. Do not let anything intimidate. Wake up, church. Man, there's just, if you just get that, if you just get that, activate. Don't let anything intimidate. Wake up, church. Those are just those kind of resounding Designing thing, and it's so easy. It's so easy. Just let the Holy Spirit flow. You have the best leader, the best guide, the best teacher. Let Him perfect you. Amen. So I want, I want to, I want to pray for, if if anybody wants. Yeah. Anybody needs prayer, I want you to come. Okay. I want you. There's not a lot of room in here, so if you have something that you really need to share with your neighbor. Please go outside, okay? I want to encourage you. Every single service, I think we miss a lot of the times what God is still doing because we're in a hurry to do whatever. Stay hooked up. Stay hooked up. We, we really don't meet for a lot of time. Contrary to public opinion, <laughs> we only have you for a few hours out of the week. When you're here, stay hooked up. Stay hooked up with what God's doing because it'll bless you. You're, it's not because it's something I want you to do. It's because I know it'll bless you. You'll receive from it. If you participate with the ministry that's going forward, you're hooking up with the Holy Spirit to be able to minister that way. You're getting training, hands-on training. So when you're out in the streets, you know how to pray. You know how to move. Not because you learned it, because you know it by the Holy Spirit. Amen? We have... An awesome opportunity to be able to participate with something that we need a huge breakthrough in. As every, fam as every individual, every family, every person, to see great financial prosperity. 
come to God's house and come to your house to prosper even as your soul prospers. Now, the Holy Spirit has ministered some soul prosperity here this morning. You're blessed. You're blessed. It's going to, I think it's going to take you a little while to realize what God has imparted, but I want you to hook up in faith and know that this is a life changing date. I'm so excited to hear the reports. I went out and prayed for someone and they got healed. It's exciting. It's exciting. Just activate. So if you need prayer, I want you to come. Come and worship the Lord with your tithes, with your, with your offerings. Bless Him. Let Him pour out a blessing on your heart. If you, will, if you will consecrate everything about your life to Him, who you are, spirit, soul, and body, financially, your household, you just consecrate it all to Him, He can bless it. That's why we give. There's rules. There's reasons that things happen. Right? There's laws. The law of sowing and reaping. It's a great one. Participate with what God is doing and be blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Love the presence of the Holy Ghost. So come, come and worship the Lord with your giving. Come and, and if you need prayer for anything, listen real quick. Come tonight. Bring someone who needs healing. Okay? If you, if you go out and you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, bring them here. We'll see God move. Let them soak in the presence of God. Let them hear the word of God and let faith be stirred in their hearts. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Love you. Bless you. Come back tonight.